Okay. So identify the domain and the range of the function. What's the definition of the domain? Caleb? All the numbers. Well, an input is one thing, right? Um, so this is an input, and this is an input, and this is an input. So there's not things in the input, there's things in the domain, right? Uh, maybe in the list that input is above. Right? But this is the input, this is the output, this is the input, this is the output. If we collect all of the inputs together, then that's the domain. So all the inputs. If you write them together, that's the domain. So the domain <coughs> is a set of numbers, a set of 6, 12, 21, and 42. Really similarly, what's the range? Cameron? 5, 7, 10, and 17. 5, 7, 10, and 17. Because the definition of the range is what? All the outputs. All the inputs, the domain. All the outputs, the range. All outputs. Okay. So state whether the table represents a function. So sometimes we'll have inputs and outputs that will be functions, and other times they won't be functions. What do you say? Is it a function or is it not? Why is that? You look at it and you say it's a function. What makes you say that it is a function? I don't know. Well, that is one thing. Uh, the input, every input has to go to an output. It has, if, if we had one and then a blank, that wouldn't be a function because it needs to go somewhere. It needs to be given to some output. There's something even more specific, more special about a function than that. Yeah. Each input has one output. Has one, right? Only one. One meaning not zero, and one meaning not two, and not three, and not four, not any more than one. Exactly one. So does this meet that criteria? Is that OK? Is that a function? Yeah, it is. Uh, but what about this? Does this make you? Stop and wonder if it's a function. Think maybe it's not a function because you see two sixes. Two out, two inputs have the same output, right? That kind of sounds bad. It sounds like it's against the rules. You can have two inputs. Two inputs can have the same output. Uh huh. Output. So you can't have it vice versa. Can't have vice versa. Yeah. Right. Every input has exactly one output. One goes to six, and it only goes to six. Right. Two only goes to seven. 3 only goes to 8, 4 only goes to 6, 5 only goes to 9. That's following that wording exactly. Every input has exactly one output. So it's good. Even though 1 goes to 6 and 4 goes to 6, it doesn't matter that they both go to 6. It matters that 1 only goes to 6 and 4 only goes to 6. Okay. That's different from saying only 4 goes to 6. You see the difference? 4 only goes to 6, meaning 4 doesn't go to anything else but 6. Only 4 goes to 6 means 4 is the only one that goes to 6. Okay. So every input has one and only one output, so it is a function. We're going to make a table to represent this function, number 14. Okay. What's a table look like? like this. This is a table. This is a table. So we make a table. We can make a table like this, x, y, or we can make it vertical, whatever we want. So what's going to go here? Uh, the first 12. And we're going to put in also 15, and 22, and 30. And when we put in 12, what comes out? Put in 15, what comes out? 22 and 30. 27. So that's a table. 
that shows what goes in and what comes out. One way to represent a function. Here's one way is an equation. Another way is a table. Um, another way is a graph. Right? These are all ways of representing functions. What goes into the function and what comes out of the function. <coughs> How do we draw a graph? How do we start to draw a graph? Not Kate, somebody else. Ruth. Draw the two lines for the graph. The two lines, perpendicular lines for the graph. One is the input. Just like this, this is lab we could label this input. This is labeled input. This is labeled input. We could, we could label this input and this output. Or we have letters that represent input and output. What letter represents input? X does. What letter represents output? Y does. That's why we call them the X and the Y axis. But if we want a more general, we can say input and output. Well, now what? How do I graph stuff about this function? How do I graph this function? that no one in this room knows how to graph this function at all? Sir? Can you plug the domains in for x? The things in the domain, so the inputs, into the x. OK? OK, let's do that. We put 1 into the x, and we multiply it by 3, and we get 3. And we subtract 1, and we get 2. So what? We put, we put in 1, and we get out 2, so what? Then what do we do with it? Now that we know that one goes in and two comes out. Come on guys, but you guys want more time in class? Like, you want to go through it and you want to have more time towards the end? You don't want me to teach up against the bell and you, like, get to your next class just right on time? Then volunteer more information. Be quick to respond and, and offer something. Offer some kind of an idea, the response, the correct answer. Go for it, but don't just sit there blankly staring. So, anyone except for Caleb, because he does get so much of the work at it. We know that one has gone into this function, and what came out? Two. And how do we show that on the graph? Of course. Can you go over one? Go over two. So, we're assuming you mean from the middle, and then we go over to the right. One, okay? Up two. We go up two, and what? And we make a dot, a point. That point represents what just happened to the function. One went in, and two came out. One went in, and two came out. That's how we know uh, what's up with this, with this function when one goes in, okay? Should we put more points on here? Yeah, there's more things in the domain, right? We haven't finished up. We need to graph uh, this function for all values in the domain. Okay. So what's another point that's gonna go on the graph then, now that we know what a graph is? Price. Um, you're going to go two out. Two to the right. And then uh, five up. Five is going to come out of this function. Two, three, four, five. Ooh, I should have left Ooh, a lot more room, actually. Here, I'm going to do these points in black so you can see them. OK? Any more points? How many more points are about to go on this graph? Mm -hmm. Three more points. You got three more things in the domain to plug into the, the into the function and uh, get the outputs for those inputs. So what's the next point that we're going to put in? Yes, Jane. Um, go over three. To the right three. What? To the right three. Yeah. Um, you go up. Go up to eight. So when three went in, then let's see. Five, six, seven, eight came out. This is messy. Okay, so three went in, eight came out. All right. Well, now we're going to put in four, right? Put in four. What's going to come out when we put four in there? Eleven. So there was eight, nine, ten, eleven. And make sure that it's right above four so that we know the input was four. And then we put in five and we go up to 12, 13, 14. And there we go. 
Should we connect all these these points with a line? Just draw a line straight through them. You say no. Why do you say no? Bridger, you said no, but you don't know why. How do you know you shouldn't do it? You shouldn't. You know you shouldn't because why? You know it's bad. Anybody know why we wouldn't draw lines through those? Would it be a different type of graph if we drew lines through it? Different type? Well, I guess, I guess we could say yes or no, depending on, on how we define different. It would have to be different because it wouldn't be the same as what it looks like right now. If we drew a line through it, it would look different. So it wouldn't be the same. But they, they both would be graphs, right? So they're both similar graphs. They're both two-dimensional graphs. Well, let's talk about this. If we were to draw a line, it's a pretty bad line, but it goes through all those points. If we were to draw this line, this line is really a bunch of points. It's like an infinite number of points, all drawn infinitely close together, okay? And they now make this line, right? So we're saying all these points are a result of this function, right? For instance, um, putting in zero, gives us negative one. Put in zero, get out negative one. But did we put zero into this function? Are we supposed to put zero into this function? How do we know? It's not in the data, it's not in the domain. The domain does not have zero in it. So zero is not an input we're supposed to use. Okay? If we, if we were supposed to use zero, it should say that. It should say like the, the numbers from zero to five, and then all the numbers from zero to five, even decimals and fractions, could be used. But it's not what it says. It says use these numbers as the inputs. One, two, three, four, and five, and that's it. Okay. So by drawing this line, we're saying all of the inputs, whatever input has an output, we're saying we put that in and this is what we got out. But we didn't do that. We didn't put those values in. We didn't put in one and a half, or we didn't put in two and two thirds, or three and uh, seven tenths, or whatever. We didn't put those values into the function. So we shouldn't draw a line where we didn't uh, get output. So we'll undo that. Only those points match. Only those points count. <coughs> okay. So here we have this function, the graph of a function, and where we just took this rule, this is a rule, and turned it into a graph. We're going to take this graph and turn it into a rule. So the thing about this, it can be tricky at first to, to write rules for functions. And sometimes it takes uh, a guess, a try, and see if it works. And if it doesn't, but it's close, you know, adjust it a little bit. So let's see what we're getting out of this function. For one, right? We're getting out of this function. We could we even write it this way. Okay. What we're getting out of this function is uh, zero. We get zero out. And then we get two, and then we get four, and then we get six. Okay, definitely looks like a pattern. Okay. So can you write a rule that says y is equal to, and then x is over here somewhere, maybe it's multiplied by a number, or maybe it's just having a number subtracted from it and added to it, or divided, or something like that. You know, what's happening to x to cause us to get y. Let's put one, two, three, uh, four, So it is 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay. Those aren't the inputs that this function uses. It might be make it a little easier to make a rule to go from x to y. Anybody think of a, a rule that would get you from x to y? And would, the same rule would get you from this x to this y, and so on. X 
times 2. 0 times 2 is 0. 1 times 2 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 3 times 2 is 6. Okay, it's working. Right? It seems like it would keep working if, if we even had uh, more points on this graph, right? So we think maybe it's uh, 2, not 3, 2 times x. That's great work. But is that right? Is that completely right? What's wrong about it? It's, I mean, it looks right. right. The way they had it written here with this input and this output, it works. Okay. But is there is there something wrong about what I wrote down here? What's wrong about it, Sarah? <coughs> Your x's are wrong. My x's are wrong. Yeah. Right? They're like they're off by one. I should have <coughs> used what I had before. It should be it should be one, and this should be two, and this should be three, and this should be four. If it was zero, one, two, three, two x would work perfectly. But it's not. It's one, two, three, four. Well, if this was zero, and this was one, and this was two, and this was three, then two times x would work great. Okay. So can we make it so that like we turn one into zero, and then multiply zero by two, and then turn two into one and multiply one by two, and then turn three into one and multiply, or turn three into two and multiply two by two, and turn four into three and then multiply three by two? Do you see? Right. Is there something we could do to x before we multiply it by 2? x minus 1 times 2. x minus 1 times 2? Let's see. Uh, yeah, well, I'll just keep using that. Right? Two, instead of multiplying by x, we can multiply it by x minus 1. Subtract 1 from x first, and then multiply it by 2. Right? We could... Uh, Somebody else may have done this a different way and, and thought uh, it was like that, but then maybe they'll change the y. Like we could distribute this two and get two x minus two, and because the distributive property works, this should be it should make the same thing, right? So two times one is two, two times one is two, minus two gives me back down to zero. Uh, two times two is four, minus two gives me two. Two times three is six, minus two is four. Two times four is eight, minus two is six. However you go about it, however you think of it, um, yes, I, I led you down a certain path. I led you down the path that my brain would take. This is what it looked like to me. This is how I constructed my function. Which may do it differently. You might, wi might wind up with this uh, immediately. I wouldn't have even thought of something like that. Um, so watching me do it and having me lead you through it over and over, it's not hurtful. It's not going to hurt anything. But if you never try it and fail and fix it, you won't truly internalize the stuff and learn it. Okay. So, uh, is, are there any questions about this or any other homework problems from 1.6, 1.7? Which section? So this is uh, years since 1997. <coughs> okay, so right here it's been zero years since 1997. So which year does this represent? 1997. And this year? 88, 99, 2000, and it goes up through seven. 
<clears throat> and this is the, uh, the cost. This is, we'll say, millions of dollars. How many millions of dollars it costs to have a 30 second ad during the Super Bowl? Uh, two, 1.3, 1.6 million, 2.1 million. Uh, still 2.1 million. So we can go up to here. 1.9 is starting to come down. Uh, then back up to 2.1 and 2.3. They want us to graph the function. Um, one thing, are we going to need this part of the graph? Why not? What's, what's that negative? None of the inputs are negative. This is where negative inputs exist. Okay? So, you know, we can move that over there. We don't need any negative inputs. How about, do you think we're going to need this part of the graph? No, because why? No, the outputs are negative. If the outputs were negative, that would mean that it costs you negative millions of dollars to get an ad during the Super Bowl, which that's crazy. Of course, it doesn't cost you negative money. Okay, so we just really need the first quadrant. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Of course, this would be zero. And now on the, the output axis, we should decide, you know, should I go up to like 10? Should I go up that far? Well, not how much should I go up by, but should I allow myself to go as high as 10? Yeah? Does seem good? I'm not so sure. Huh? Up to 5, why 5? Instead of 10. What's that? It's closer to 2.3, and 2.3 is what? Significant about 2.3. Okay, yes, it's 2.3 million, but what's significant about Why did you pick 2.3 rather than 2.1 or 1.6? The 1 .1 it's what? I thought it would be a good number. It's the highest one. It's the highest one. Right. No other number is higher than 2.3. So going up to 10, that might not be a good idea because 2 and 3 would be down in here, and then you wouldn't have any graph up here, and that would be a waste of space. So, uh, where should we go up to? Mm -hmm. Three? Okay. So two people were lip syncing three. And somebody said it. Singing is good. All right. And now, at year zero, at, in 1997, it cost 1.2 million. So, um, this is probably about 0.2 right there. 1.2, and then 1.3 at one year, 1998. Um, two years, 1 1.6, a little bit past 1.5. 2.1, three years later. Uh, four years later, 2.1 again. Down to 1.9. Up to 2.1 again. Uh, so for a third year, it's 2.1, and then 2.3, maybe about there. graphing inputs versus outputs. I, I get the feeling that there may be some, because there, there seems to always be some, that, that look at something like this and they say, you didn't show me this, you didn't show me an input-output thing like this where it relates to you know, uh, advertising during the Super Bowl and then show me how to graph it. So I don't know, so I won't do it. Okay, Maybe you did it, and that, that's great. But but maybe that's you. And maybe it's not this problem, but it's another problem. And I'll encourage you now and time and time again, if 
If you don't know how to do a problem, that doesn't mean you shouldn't. Start doing the problem. Right? If it says graph, draw a graph at least. And if you can get one point on there or a guess at one point, uh, great. If you don't get there but you label the graph, that's something else too. Anything you do by yourself that comes from your brain, that your brain creates, is more significant than anything that I can tell you or anyone can tell you. If it comes from your own brain, it's the most significant thing that can happen. You can create knowledge. It doesn't have to be given to you by somebody else. Okay? At one point, this was not known, and then it was known, because somebody decided that they wanted to do it this way. Okay. And now we're learning about it, we're working within this construct, uh, but the knowledge of how to do this can be put together by you. Okay. So I'm not criticizing anybody for having questions or anything like that, but uh, it's, it's the lack of input from you and, the, and, and participation that makes me just wonder and wonder. Okay. Are there any other questions? Glad well, to go over them. Sarah? 11 and 12. 11 and 12 in which section? 11 and 12 and 27. <coughs> okay. Well, 11 we did on the quiz. Right there. help for us to uh, make a table that shows what goes in and what comes out. Um, so in goes zero, and what, do, what comes out as a function when we put in zero? Put in one, right? Put in zero, get out one, that's why that point's there. Put in one, we get? 1.5. Okay, uh, two gives us two, three gives us 2.5. If all we needed was the answer, then I would have just told Sarah the answer, right? Okay. So the, the journey is important. So you want to start us off at some starting point? Or should we have somebody else? What do you think, John? You want to start us off somewhere, or do you want someone else to start us off? You'll come in at the end, maybe? OK, Alex? Okay, so this goes up 0.5 every time. Okay, so so we'll add like adding 0.5 is is something. <coughs> okay, Jada. <coughs> uh, okay, so every time we go over on the x, the the next y is one half more. What does that sound like? <coughs> over so much and go up so much? Does that sound familiar? 
figure it out. What happened to all the The graph. Yeah, it sounds like the graph. Um, let's see. Oh, we haven't done that. I'm mistaking this for algebra two, so we haven't really done that yet. Okay. Well, so what we've noticed is that every time you go over on the x, you go up one half on the y. So, like, if you had a starting place, you could add on a 0.5 and add on a 0.5 and add on a 0.5, right? And we get you the next y and the next y and the next y. Is that right? Yeah? Yeah? Okay. So, where, where do we start then? Where do we start and then add 0.5 from there? What do we, what do we first add 0.5 to? Start at one, and then right. Then you add 0.5 and add 0.5 and add 0.5, and we assume we keep adding 0.5 forever. So if we start at one, we start at one and we start adding 0.5. Right? Um, well, it's a, it's a great start. Right? We're we're getting somewhere. But right now we have y is equal to one plus 0.5, which is just 1.5, and it like, can't take us any further. So. Point five times x. Point five times x. Okay. It, it got to be divided by. Divided by what? Well, I mean, you could put x on one side and add, add you know, <coughs> point five on the other, and you could just maybe give it. Get to get to something like this. Uh, you mean do like x equals and take y and turn it into x? If that you're referring to this. Switching around on the positioning of 0.5 and x in the equation itself. So you don't mean this? No. Mm. Do you mean just uh, like? Oh, I'll, I'll just say, okay, how I can see. <coughs> y equals 1 plus x divided by. X divided by 0.5? We got also work at curiosity. What's that? We got work, I mean. Well, oh, out of curiosity. Let's see. For that to work, then 0.5 times X would have to be the same as X divided by 0.5. Okay. Uh, I'm never mind. Yeah. Okay. This, and that, that wouldn't be the same, right? Multiply by 0.5 wouldn't be the same as divided by 0.5. Divide by 0.5 would be the same as multiplying by 2. Yeah, we could divide by 2, right? We could do x over 2. Yeah. Which is the same as multiplying by 0.5. Yeah? Couldn't you also do y equals x plus 2 divided by 2? Just saying. Y equals x plus 2 divided by 2. The whole thing. Y equals x plus 2 divided by 2. The whole thing. Um, <coughs> Yeah, uh, and we, we could go from here to there just by remembering that division distributes to all terms in the numerator, and that would be y equals x over two plus two over two, and so this would be one, and then that would be 0 0.5 times x. That's great. What led you to that? What made you think of it that way? Well, because I just kind of, I don't know exactly how I thought of it that way, but Zero plus two divided by two is one. Okay, so you just looked at it for a little while and noticed that that worked. That's great. Um, okay. Any other questions? This is great. Glad to have other representations. Be able to show the same thing. Any other questions about this one? So we started at one, right? That's kind of how we we thought of it for this. Uh, uh, representation of the function. We started at 1 and we started adding 0.5 and we'll add a 0.5 for every x. So if we go over to 1, we'll add 1.5, like a single 0.5. And then if we go to 2, we'll add 2 of those 0.5s and we'll go up 1, so we'll be at 2. And we'll go over to 3, we'll add another 0.5 and we'll be at 2.5. <coughs> okay. Any other questions besides the ones that we talked about so far. Uh, 
We can apply that same reasoning to number 11. Um, let's see. So we could, we could think, oh, we're adding two on every time. We add two, we add two, we add two. Okay, and then think like, where would we have to start adding two so that when we plug in zero and one and two and three, like it all works out. Well, if we started at negative two and added two times x, negative two plus two times zero would be negative two. Uh, negative two plus two times one would be zero. Negative two plus two times two would get us up to two. So that same kind of a reasoning could work for this function. Starting at negative two and adding on two x, starting at one and adding on one half times every x. All right, well, it seems like there's no other questions, so we'll pass it into our homework. So the question was, if you have uh, in, a, in a function Two inputs go to the same output, that's okay, but one input going to two different outputs, that's not okay. So let's write something down, an example of that. And one, two, three, four. This goes to zero, and this goes to five, and this goes to five as well, and this goes to three. No rhyme or reason to why that's happening, but there it is. The thing about a function is that every input has, let's say, exactly one output. And as long as that's true, that's okay, that's a function. Okay? So this input goes to one output, this only goes to one output, this goes to one output, this goes to one output. Even though these go to the same output, individually they only go to a single output, not more than that. So, the way that I looked at for, for a table is we say one goes to zero, and two goes to five, and two also goes to six, and three goes to five, and four goes to three. Well now two goes to five, but it also goes to six, so it has two outputs, and that's not a function. Okay, so it's just, it's not bad, and it's not useless, it just isn't a function by the definition of it. more questions depending on how quickly we can ask them. What page is one on? It's not on any page. I have it printed out and ready to hand you. Writing expressions, things like uh, n less than a number five, or five, the product of five and the quantity x plus two, or something like that. Uh, writing equations, similar to what I just said, but we're saying it's equal to something, or inequalities, we're saying the product of nine and a, and a number x is less than two. Right? So you need to write that in an inequality. The product of nine and a number x is less than two. Write that down. Or we might have you know, some kind of a real world scenario where uh, somebody drives at a certain rate of speed for a certain amount of time and you need to figure out how far they went. We need to write an equation for that. Um, then uh, one point, that's, that's 1.3 and 4 and 1.6. We're going to be representing functions with things like tables and uh, maybe a mapping diagram ordered pairs, things like that. In 1.7, we represent them with graphs. So we might turn an equation into a graph. We might even turn a graph into an equation. Write a rule for a, for a graph. So once someone stops me, I'm going to have you put your stuff away, and I'll pass out the business. Jada. You can write on the test. There's, there should be plenty of room. You're free to work right on other pieces of paper as well if you like that better. Yeah? Sure, calculator is fine.